Hello again, my friends. We're back again. Back for more. Yes, back for more punishment. For any of you guys that are familiar with 1980s music, oh. they're back. They're back for more. Yay. You remember Rat? I love, oh, loved Rat. Loved yeah. Rat. I mean, yeah. it's probably probably way too early for so many of you guys out yeah. there. Unless you're into that type of <laughs> genre <laughs> of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talking about nostalgia. Yes. We're looking at Tesla's earthquake machine. So Nikola Tesla revealed that an earthquake which drew police and ambulances to the region of his laboratory at 48 East Houston Street in New York, New York, in 1898 was the result of a little machine he was experimenting with at one time that you could put in your overcoat pocket. I was experimenting with vibrations. I had one of my machines going and I wanted to see if I could get in tune with the vibration of the building. I put it up notch after notch. There was a peculiar cracking sound. I asked my assistants where did the sound come from. They didn't know. I put the machine up a few more notches. There was a louder cracking sound. I knew I was approaching the vibration of the steel building. I pushed the machine a little bit higher. Suddenly, all the heavy machinery in the place was flying around. I grabbed a hammer and broke the machine. The building would have been about our ears in another few minutes. Outside in the street, there was pandemonium. The police and ambulances arrived. I told my assistants to say nothing. Shh, guys, we know nothing. Just like, uh, what's that, Sergeant Schultz? Right, we know nothing. I know nothing. We told the police it must have been an earthquake. That's all they ever knew about it. Pretty interesting stuff. And so why are we bringing this up? Let's jump over. And check out what Dutch Sense is talking about. Now, he's been talking about seeing these directed energy beams that are probably coming from satellites or something else that's airborne, perhaps some sort of aircraft uh, up there in the sky as well. And in this one, he's showing an interesting spot where it's coming down to. So where the arrow is is where he's saying it's coming down. And that location, there is a hot spot. And where is that hot spot? Well, the hotspot's at Tyndall Air Force Base. So that immediately clicked with me. Um, because remember Hurricane Michael. Hurricane Michael was a tropical storm. And then it rapidly intensified to really what was a Category 5. They said Category 4, but then afterwards they revised it. It was unprecedented how a storm could go that fast up from tropical storm to Category 5. Incredibly powerful. Uh, as I have told you guys before, I have friends that were on the ground there, and they said it looked like Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, it looked not like a hurricane, but more like a, an explosive event. So it was interesting, too, because like with Hurricane Harvey, uh, BP Earthwatch, you know, another great channel, he caught something shoot out of Mexico below Texas and shoot towards Harvey. And then all of a sudden, Harvey w stopped and went the other way. Instead of going north, it shot in inwards into the west. And then it stalled, you know, as we know. And so what we're getting at here is our weather wars going on. Is this part of the bigger picture? Is this part of the technology that's being used? Uh, and perhaps it is really, you know, China and the U.S. covertly hitting each other with floods and earthquakes and you know meanwhile the powers that be are orchestrating everything behind the scenes but as we had said before um not everybody knows the bigger picture even even the politicians you know a lot of the politicians think they're just they're doing their thing and and they're going to make a difference and they really have good intentions some do you know and of course some are just in it for the money and the glory and the ego and the fame oh the glory right <laughs> But the bottom line here is, this is interesting. So, like Cindy was saying, okay, well, if that's the case, w what's the damage? Well, right. well, we don't know. We're not hearing anything. I searched the news. I didn't see anything about the damage from this particular beam of energy coming on down. Now, Dutch was talking about this in reference to fires going on. But in this case, you know, I'm very curious that it's Tyndall Air Force Base. And again, I brought up Hurricane Michael because... Tyne, Tyndall Air Force Base was was hammered by Hurricane Michael, hammered. So as we see in the weeks and months 
that followed Hurricane Michael, the future of Bay County and of Tyndall Air Force Base was uncertain. As it turned out, Tyndall suffered massive destruction when the eye of Hurricane Michael crossed the base on its path northward. Think about that. That was a direct hit. Uh, yeah, it was. That was. Direct hit. Mm-hmm. Boom. But with this one, I mean, what is what is what is being harmed? We don't see any fires. Everything's like soaking wet. So. Yeah, but, you know, would they tell us if they had maybe a power disruption? Would they tell us if something happened to their computer systems? Or, you know, I don't know if they would. So, you know, I don't know what type of effect if this was some sort of attack on the base. You know, we don't really know what it did. So it's just curious that that's where it was. So the entire future of the base was basically, you know, up in up in the air. Well, what are they going to do with it? They're going to rebuild it, and you know, a, as it turns out, um, yeah, they're they're sinking a lot of money into it. Um, okay, whoops, that's not the one I want. And then going over here, how about Ridgecrest? You know, how about Ridgecrest? Because Ridgecrest, where the earthquake came, yeah, China Lake Naval, you know, base right there. So was that, and, and many people, and me included, were wondering if that was some sort of earthquake machine. If Tesla had it, you know, in 1898, yeah. uh, you know, what would the technology look like now? By now they have, a, they have it and they have a remote control for it. As you see here, 980 million, almost a billion dollars for China Lake earthquake reconstruction because it was hammered too. So, you know, that was... Uh, basically, Ridgecrest was a 6.4, a 5.4, and a 7.1. And then so many aftershocks, you can't count them. And then you had 11 months later, a 5.5 aftershock. So is this really, you know, are they acts of war? Uh, you know, they they very well could be. And we're just completely kept out of the loop because they don't want to put any big announcements of WW and then plus three. And we, we went to you know, Ridgecrest, we were there, and uh, you know when it happened, we were only living like maybe, I don't know, 90 miles away, less than 100 miles away, so we felt it. Um, it was, you know, it was a big one. So it, it just gets you thinking when you look at this. Now, the other thing, too, um, Dutch finds, if we go through the video, I don't have it highlighted, but he sees another beam that comes out and is heading right towards Lake Charles while the hurricane is is going in. And as we know, you know, that area got hammered twice. So is is the beam steering the hurricane? I, I feel it absolutely could. But then I, I also want to think that they have, don't they have some technology to take out whatever is putting a beam down? Perhaps, but, you know, perhaps the lines are really blurred. You know, and so, you know, perhaps, you know, there there is no engagement done in that manner because there is a desired outcome, perhaps from both sides. So, you know, it's it's really convoluted. But, you know, of course, we could look at other things like we've talked about before, all these different agendas that are out there. Mm -hmm. And there's certain numbers that go with them, such as 2021. Or 2030. Yeah. Or we could look at DEAGEL 2025 yeah. and see the projections there. So, you know, I'll get the links for uh, Dutch's video here for you guys. It was the one he did yesterday. And uh, very, very curious. And that other beam that goes down it hits the Lake Charles area right where there's a, a radar station. Hmm. Now that's curious. I got to say, you know, uh, to me, it feels like these things are uh, being directed, targeted. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, when you take a really close look at it, it does. And then you can, if you think outside the box a little bit, you can put the pieces together. Yeah. And, you know, of course, we have the wildfires that have been going on in the West, you know, which are just atrocious. You know, California provides, I think it is the number one state as far as the overall food production and so much of that area is getting has gotten toasted this year for like five million acres, you know. And then how about the floods up in Nebraska and Iowa and, you know, throughout the breadbasket? You know, you got to wonder if there was any interesting lights coming from the sky there, too, to right. like amplify things. You know, there, as we said before, there's so many times that 
we've talked about declassified um, weather control uh, patents, do you know? And, and there's also just, you know, you could see that these tests have been going on for so long. It, there's a, a, such a history of it that you could just track down. So, you know, the technology here in 2020 is obviously going to be a lot higher than 1898 when Tesla sh- shook a Manhattan building. Yeah, it sure is. <laughs> they've, they've gotten it down to a very unique science. So all really interesting stuff. Thank you guys for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. We couldn't do it without your support. And we appreciate you. Stay safe. God bless and namaste. Namaste.